Well, I'm on the uh, Munson here with the Good Morning Portugal live stream YouTube channel and podcast. And uh, we are moving our way towards 20,000 downloads of the podcast. So thank you to all you quiet ones, uh, the ones who we don't seem to see here very often on the live stream. But thank you so much for um, quietly listening in the background there to the podcast. Uh, special shout out. An acknowledgement to you this morning as we begin the live stream on Friday the 14th of August 2020. Funny, I never say the date when we start um, because it's all over social media and I imagine it would be pretty obvious. But maybe if these are to be discovered by audio or vi audio visual archaeologists in the future, it might be useful to date stamp them. Anyway, uh, how are you this morning? Do let me know. Um, I'm... Um, I think I've reached peak fatigue of moving and staying up late and uh, being on the Good Morning Portugal wine club last night. We tried a very nice red from the Douro. So I'm going to take, could you whisper please this morning? Um, not that I was a sort of excessive or uh, debauched in my behavior, but um, I think it's all caught up with me a little bit. And uh, some lovely good mornings this morning. Good morning to you, Kevin. Yes, thanks, Kevin. Uh, I'm enjoying our correspondence and it's nice to know. I think we, we live... Uh, fairly close to each other still and we we share a, an interest in Bayrada wines and I'm looking forward to sharing one with you soon uh, that will be great so good morning to you Kevin uh, and from Jim as well this morning saying hi from Germany good morning to you good morning uh, Jim McDonald in Germany how are you today and everybody else who's uh, watching or listening this morning would it be great to find out actually to just have it on in the background is it a bit like you know morning radio uh, do you sit and watch intently i mean you know when it's me and no guests it's, it's not that much of a visual feast to be fair so maybe you just treat it like radio looks like radio uh, and is a, a live stream and uh, yeah fascinated to know how you consume the good morning portugal uh, experience project i'll call it that so let's have a quick look at the weather and uh, to come this morning, uh, Jeff uh, in the UK asked me if I could talk a little bit about the uh, Via Verde uh, toll scheme in Portugal. And I'm really surprised I haven't. I think I've made mention of it, but I haven't done a, um, a specific feature. So a couple of things. Exploring Portugal by car, we'll look at tolls and how to get the little transponder unit. And we'll also look at the Camino because I was walking back from the supermarket last night. Uh, just down the road from me and I saw one of them um, the little yellow signs yellow on blue showing you the way to get to Fatima or back up to uh, Porto or wherever it is you're deciding to go on the, your Camino route but where I am I'm, I'm right on it and I get to see those signs um, and um, I, I'd love to walk it myself or parts of it so we'll talk a little bit about the Portuguese Camino as well this is wonderful look good day from uh, good eye from uh, Australia um, the strangest of things happening in your uh, Victoria, um, what is it called, district? Um, forgive me. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not the sharpest tool in the box. I could say this. That sounds like an Australian phrase, doesn't it? So, but yeah, Victoria uh, looks like um, a very difficult place to be at the moment. Uh, Sophie Rose Martin. But thank you very much for saying. Where are you in in the vast Australia? Uh, I have been there myself and had a wonderful time on the Gold Coast and up in the mountains a bit further back from the sea. I had a lovely time there. Where are you in Australia, Sophie? And thank you for saying good morning. Check this out. Um, Berkeley, California. Berkeley. Bar we say Berkeley, don't we, in English? It's Berkeley, isn't it, when you pronounce it as, it, as it's written um, in, um, it looks like Berkelele uh, as well. Linda Gina Miller, Berkeley, California, uh, home of, of the epicenter, it, was it not, of the great sort of hippie revolution of the uh, 60s. In, in America and I've uh, been there too I'm not boasting not doing some travel boasting this morning but loved it yeah drove that big sur route and had a wonderful time uh in in California a few years back good morning to you Linda uh Stephanie Bennett bon dia from Tavira uh usually in the kitchen when I'm with you live fantastic Stephanie what's for breakfast this morning Portuguese orange juice I hope it's so sweet it's five or ten times sweeter than the orange juice I grew up with. I'm, I'm surprised still when I drink Portuguese orange juice. It's absolutely lovely. Uh, good morning from Tavira as well. From So Stephanie and, and neighbour Madeline uh, in Tavira, great with news from you. Um, well, that's really nice to hear. Thank you, Madeline. Uh, good morning to you. And bonjour uh, from France, I'm suspecting, uh, from Clemy Chaz. Uh, bonjour to you as well how what a lovely international spread we have this morning uh welcome one and all so portugal weather um, i'm afraid i can't stretch to doing the weather in uh, 
California, Germany. Well, I could do, couldn't I? But what I've got set up is, uh, I think you want to know about the weather in Portugal, don't you? Uh, either making your way here or dreaming about here, being here one day. So this is what you'd experience today. 18 degrees currently in Lisbon, and that will rise to 27 degrees. Uh, Porto currently 16 and sunny, and that's going to rise to 23. Not a cloud in the sky uh, for the next uh, three days or so uh, around Portugal, and certainly no 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 cloud in uh, Faro for the next five days. That's the forecast anyway. Coimbra currently 17 degrees and rising to 27. And Faro, 20 degrees at the moment, but rising to 28. So a lovely day there. I'm going to have a sip of my British tea. Do please bear with me for just a moment. Mm. Uh, yeah, I told you it would be relaxed this morning. Uh, Jeannie sent me a blank message there. That's not nothing wrong with that. You also sent me a beautiful photograph. Didn't have time to put that together as, as the starter screen this morning, but Jeannie sent me, she is Le Bon Dia from Belgium this morning. Uh, Jeannie sent me a, a beautiful picture of one of her visits uh, to, to Portugal, and uh, it's a Bon Dia picture for sure, I think, um, and uh, we welcome those from everybody who's got... Um, a uh, a shot of their <clears throat> excuse me uh, l let me just press the cough button you don't want to hear this there we go that's better yeah do send me your pictures of what you see from your window in the morning you know your um your forever view or your 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 realized dream view or your touring pictures uh in portugal Jeannie, you did that for me last night um after you were laughing at us talking about freedom of speech after one or two glasses of red wine last night. I think the word you used um, was rattle. You you Brits and Americans can rattle on a bit, <laughs> but I think you're enjoying it. I was talking about the difference between freedom of speech and speaking freely last night, and I must say I enjoyed it. Um, and thank you for your picture, Jeannie. Those welcome from anybody. Also, nature pictures. Uh, Owen's picture, remember, of the hoopos um, was rather good, and we featured a picture of a lovely dragonfly that landed on somebody's clothes peg just as they were going out to the washing line. These are the things you see here, and I'd love to be able to share those on our starting screen in the morning if you want to send them to me, carl at carlmunson.com. And uh, Stephanie is saying, yes, I am actually squeezing oranges for juice now. I'm not psychic, I promise you, or not in any profound way that I know about. And hello to you from Berkeley. I am from the Bay Area, but moved away five years ago. The Bay Area, fabulous. Um, oh, Brisbane, yeah, went to Brisbane. Uh, Queensland, and low COVID here, all state borders locked down, sad about Victoria. Absolutely, you would be, wouldn't you? It's, uh, it's a real shame, uh, really horrible to see that. And um, hopefully that will pass and become a distant memory soon. Uh, any news about COVID-19 in Portugal? Well, seeing as you ask, um, Madeline, what I might do then is go to the figures. I'll go to Worldometers um, and um, give you the picture of uh, the uh, cases and, and recoveries and so on here in Portugal. You may have to remind me, uh, but yeah, I'll do that for you this morning, uh, Madeline. No problem at all. Uh, we, we, did, we did say yesterday that uh, Portugal was among the lowest um, in terms of death rate and uh, contagion in Europe. Portugal doing really well. Um, it has to be said. Bon dia from uh, Kez Cracknell. Good morning to you, Kez. Uh, good to hear from you. And Jeff, Jeff, I don't know if you've uh, if you heard what I said earlier. I'm going to do tolls, particularly for you. You asked the question about how to use the Via Verde toll, where to get the, the unit from. And um, I will go into that probably uh, in just a moment. Uh, so bon dia from you, from the damp Cotswolds. Even Mrs. L is listening today. Good morning to you, Mrs. L. Uh, special good morning to you. And um, did Jeff say, oh, Come and listen to that Carl Munson guy. Um, he might be talking about tolls. I mean, that wouldn't be a very attractive or exciting introduction necessarily, but you've got to know about these things, Mrs. L. Uh, so especially for you today, the the Portuguese toll feature dedicated to the Leylands in the damp Cotswolds. Damp, but you've had the thunderstorm now. I think it's been really hot, hasn't it? Has it not? in the UK. So you've had a downpour by the sound of it, or is it just morning dew in the beautiful Cotswolds? Come back to your, you and your tolls in a minute, Jeff. Uh, morning from a cool Castanero de Pera. Cool start, Pete. I think it's going to be hot later. Uh, busy today with Chef Aldo uh, making uh, mole, mole, mole with uh, rojolote, uh, rojolote. Um Has he done this on purpose? Um, that's Turkey or Peru, as we call it here in Portugal. Uh, tinga de polo, spicy chicken. Tinga, tinga. That sounds great. That's that's onomatopoeic for sure, isn't it? Uh, onomatopoeic. 
uh, spicy chicken, tinga de polo, uh, cherry papas, uh, potatoes and chorizo, and tacos pastor. Very meaty selection there. Uh, tacos pastor. Um, is that like Vickers tacos? Um, and that'll be pork, all with guacamole and tequila. Wow, that sounds great. Um, so, yeah, give Chef Aldo a pack, pat on the back from me and keep him supplied with cold beer uh, whilst he's producing all of that lot. Pete, good morning to you. Thanks for your message. Uh, and, uh, Kez, yeah, I see what you did there. Uh, bon dia, change the spelling. I wasn't going to say anything, Kez. Um, it, it's fine. Um, you know, we're very uh, accepting and welcoming of anyone who even gives it a try to speak in Portuguese, let alone writing it out. So uh, no no problem there. But thank you for, for making the effort to correct that. Uh, morning, Carl from Gary. Thanks for the wine club and talk out and down on the river again this morning. Listening on the smartphone, presumably, as well. What's the water looking like this morning, Gary? Oh, but it's beautiful there. He's in Alviazara, everybody. And uh, yeah, down there. Are you fishing or just walking, Gary? Uh, Jonathan Hardy, morning from Northampton. We're buying a house there now. Congratulations. Um, it's always lovely to hear that, and I hope you are reunited or united with your house very soon, Jonathan, and that you'll have a wonderful adventure here in Portugal. Um, so, yeah, congratulations to you. And FD, Frank Devane is here. Bon dia, Carl. He was with us last night. Frank apparently has no filter, uh, uh, his uh, partner Rachel was saying, when he's out and about. So it's very important. Freedom of speech is quite <laughs> an obvious thing for Frank. And he was, uh, you know, in, in the in the Good Evening Portugal session, we do encourage uh, not necessarily freedom of speech because it's not, you know, I have to say it, it has to be legal. So it's not entirely free. Um, we're asking people to be expressed and responsible. So we have a di bit of a discussion uh, relevant to Portugal, respectful in our co conversation with each other and legal, obviously. Um, and um, yeah, it was great to have your company last night, Frank. Uh, and let's do it again soon. Oh, yeah, tonight, in fact, uh, expat sport report. Hopefully, Calvin Avery will be able to be with us. Um, he's uh, toing and froing, and uh, so his schedule uh, makes it a little bit difficult. But he is a sports genius, but in, it, as, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, he'll be with us tonight talking about uh, all things to do with sport and on the expat sport report on Good Evening Portugal tonight. Excuse me for one minute again. Just have some more tea. I wonder how many podcasters um, say, hold on a minute, I'm just going to have a, a, a sip more tea. Uh, Mrs. L, um, yeah, it's funny because Mrs. M, uh, Mrs. Munson here, uh, does and doesn't like being called Mrs. M. It is a little bit impersonal, as to be said. So, Sally, uh, sorry uh, to refer to you as Mrs. L, it's Sally. Uh, you've been told, Jeff. And um, Steve and Claire, morning from a very bright Manchester. Oh, excellent. Uh, not sure it will last, yeah. <laughs> um Yes, it may get damp again in Manchester. We know that, and that's why we we know, what we know and love about Manchester. But enjoy the bright weather while you've got it there, uh, Claire and Steve. Thanks for saying hi, Bon dia. Tad late this morning. Shouldn't have finished the bottle last night. Yep, that's your um, that's how you roll though, right, Neil? Uh, he, he, th he thinks it's bad to recork a bottle, um, and I can see where he's coming from. But then, yes, come the morning, you think may maybe rethink that strategy. Fishing this morning in Alvazra, weather is lovely. Well, that sounds idyllic to me, um, listening to... I was going to say your favourite radio show. Um, that's a bit of a presumption on my part, but I, I'd, I'd love to be listening to my favourite radio show, uh, you know, a little bit of a uh, talk radio in the background. Maybe not. Maybe get rid of that completely and just enjoy nature, Gary. Uh, we won't keep you. Uh, we'll talk about tolls, we'll talk about the Camino, and we'll try and keep our voices down. That suits me as well this morning. And um, thanks. We're coming to Bomboral, uh, says Jonathan. Oh, interesting. Tell us more about uh, why you chose Bomboral, Jonathan, please, if you will. OK, tolls now. And I go to the Portugalist, as I do from time to time, to tell you about tolls. Uh, if I can find that. Oh, here we go. And um, Well, it happens sometimes. Uh, the uh, the whole thing crashes when I um, load up and share a screen. So I uh, hope um, you can hear me again now. And sorry for that sudden loss of uh, broadcast there. Let's give that another go. Let's see if, if we can connect this time with the Portugalist Toll Road article. Yeah, there you go. And uh, Jeff and uh, Sally wanted to – I don't know about you, Sally. Jeff wanted to know about – uh, the Via Verde system, but I'll do a general thing because uh, Portugalist.com uh, 
Com have gone to the trouble to write a huge guide. There's a lovely site, The Road to Spain and Faro, uh, with your A2 uh, slip road there to Lisboa uh, as well. And uh, yeah, Portugalist.com, using the roads in Portugal, a guide's using the toll roads specifically in Portugal. Uh, using the toll roads, they say, is the fastest way to get around Portugal. And I'll read their article, but I'll chip in with some of my own experience, and I hope you do too. Um, a drive from Lisbon to Albufeira, for example, would take just under two and a half hours on the toll roads, but around three and a half hours on the non-toll roads. Um, but it will cost you, as my friend Henry discovered, uh, an eye-watering 23 euros, I think, uh, from Lisbon down to um, Faro or thereabouts. Uh, you get the road to yourself a lot of the time. It's almost like hiring a private road uh, because I think a lot of the locals don't like to use them. And there aren't many tourists around. That's the other thing. It's really quiet. Um, I think you get a you know, breakdown service and all sorts to attend to you, uh, where you when you pay that premium. Uh, speed isn't everything, they, they say here on Portugalist.com, especially if you're not in a rush to get anywhere. Driving on the non-toll roads, you're likely uh, to, to see and stop off or more likely to stop off at interesting towns and cities and to see slices of Portuguese life that you aren't likely to see on the toll roads. That's so true. Um, so, yeah, it is really a toss-up of um, not only uh, speed uh, versus a, a kind of leisurely um, meander through the country, but quality of road, too, it has to be said. The, the roads are really well-made and, and new on the tolls. If you take the um, uh, A roads or the, the aren't tolls or the N roads or the IC roads, um, they they they're not as well maintained, and maybe that's part of a, a strategy to get you on the toll roads. Actually, so you don't ruin your suspension, um, as I find sometimes. I I'll come back to this, but I really like to drive where I am. I live very close to the IC2. I think it's an amazing, as they say here on Portugalist.com, a really good way of seeing true Portugal. Uh, driving the IC2 um, from let's say Pombal or getting down towards Tamar and back up to Porto is really interesting and you know you get to see real portuguese life on that and i drove from from where i live um to porto the other night and it was great i love it and i managed to find a way of getting to porto and therefore to porto airport in the future without using tolls at all and that's a real challenge actually a lot of portuguese people i think like to do that is figure out how to avoid the toll save a bit of money and yeah and, and like i say get to see portuguese life for real and not a toll which could put you anywhere in um of, of course you see the portuguese countryside to some extent but you don't see local culture so much and you could really be on any port uh, any european toll road um of course sometimes you just want to get from a to b going back to the article uh, if that's the case this guide will explain how the toll system works in portugal so here you go uh, two types of toll roads in portugal Toll roads that are entirely electronic and those that allow other types of payment as well, cash and card. Now, my experience of those is if you don't get a ticket, you pay, I think, the whole toll of, that you touch upon. And we were in our camper van when we first were driving from Spain uh, down to Tamar and uh, we panicked. We went through and didn't get a ticket and we didn't have a Via Verde transponder. This is the little unit we'll tell you more about that you stick on your windscreen that tells when you're going through um the uh, toll stations uh, and i think we had to pay something like 80 euros we learned the hard way uh, and then after that um i think we must have gone through one of the electric pickups that wasn't like a a toll booth and the um a fine was generated from the uk one of those horrible lawyers letters you know those 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 companies where you're not quite sure whether they're legit or not but they talk to you in a very threatening way and i think it was like they they hounded me after 18 months for six euros and it was genuine a genuine mistake i mean i just paid it and it was and it was fine but it's it, it, that's why it's important that's why i want to share this with you because it is important to know what you're doing because of all the stresses in that we experienced when we first came and this is probably the most significant one for me after as i recall is knowing what to do on the toll roads and that awful feeling of like you know how do i pay this was that actually uh, a toll i just went through so we're going to find out more there are usually one or two lanes that are marked Via Verde, which is green road, isn't it? Um, to use these lanes, you need an electronic transponder in your car. Otherwise, you should go through the normal lanes. And then you stop at the barrier and you get a ticket and then you pay at the other end. Um, that's going through the normal lanes. If you're renting your the, the car you're using, your rental company will be able to rent you a transponder. If it's your own car, you can either purchase or rent one. And we'll we'll find out briefly how to do that. We'll come back to that, Jeff. Um, it's very easy to go through the Via Verde lens accidentally. There you go. If you do this, you won't have a ticket and you're liable for a fine. 
then this is the problem. You're, you're pr approaching these things at a high speed, having to make quick decisions. So avoid, if you don't have a transponder, avoid the green lanes um, and the little logo. Hopefully we'll see that on the screen here and I'll describe it to you podcast listeners, but you will get fined as I did. And um, it's, it's, it's eye-watering, as I've said before. Uh, you can either exit through the Via Verde lanes and wait for it to catch up with you, or you can try and get assistance there and then. And that wasn't easy either. We stopped and we had you know drivers who weren't rude or unpleasant, but saying like, come on, you need to move. And it became quite stressful, actually. <clears throat> What's this on my screen? What's this pop up? Oh, it's gone now. Um, about the Algarve there. Um, sorry, that's obscuring my... <laughs> I don't know how to... This is the problem of using people's other people's um, websites. I'll have to just read that through the gap there. Have a backup payment, they're suggesting. The second thing that you need to know is that non-Portuguese debit and credit cards don't always work in the toll machines. That's good advice. So uh, make sure you've got cash or get yourself you know, a, a Portuguese debit or credit card as soon as you can. For this reason, it's a good idea to carry more than one card or ideally some cash as well. That's really good advice. Wherever you go in Portugal, have more than one option, okay? Uh, cash is usually king, but still, there are places that only take debit cards, especially at the moment. Um, so you know, have a... Um, have a rucksack with you with all your various kinds of cash, American dollars. No, I'm really kidding. But yeah, have more than one electronic means as well as your cash. Don't worry if you forget. Most of the petrol stations have an ATM inside the shop. That's good to know, isn't it? So um, electronic toll roads. Find out everything you'll need at portuglist.com. I can't get rid of that off the screen now, but that's a fair enough. That's an advert for them. Um and we'll just look at this website through the tiny little crack here. So there's a nice map of the electronic toll roads. That's worth knowing about um, rather than stumbling upon it accidentally and uh, facing that stress. The electronic toll roads, they say, for example, the A22 and the Algarve are a lot more confusing, particularly when it, comings, when it comes to paying for them. If you don't take a ticket, instead the cameras record your number plate, your number plate, and the system calculates how much you owe. And um, you won't be able to pay straight away. Uh, after 48 hours, excluding weekends, your journey should show up in the system and you'll be able to pay your bill then. You 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 need to pay for your journey within five days. It's sounding more and more stressful, isn't it? Depending on your car, there are a few different ways that you can pay for your journey. It's a good idea to read through this before using the motorway so you can decide whether you actually want to use it. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like you haven't got a choice as well, though. You know, you, you, you're thinking, OK, there's going to be a non-toll road any minute that I can veer off. And, and use the non-toll road. But then suddenly you're on a toll road. That, that's been my experience anyway. Uh, one payment option that isn't mentioned below is pay shops, such as news agents and other shops. Although you can pay your tolls here, it's actually better to pay in a post office. The reason being that the system in the post office knows your exact journey and the exact amount you pay, you need to pay. The machines in news agents don't actually know how much you owe, so they just charge you the maximum amount. Use the post office, guys. Uh, there have also been some stories of people paying at the news agent, but the payment not being processed properly and the customer later receiving fines for not paying on time. OK, let me just clarify that a bit. I do recommend like they do using a post office. I had a hire car the other day. I wasn't expecting to use toll roads. So I said to them, no, I don't want to rent the transponder. And um, I, sorry if this is boring. If you're not a car user or you've no interest in tolls, this is going to be really tedious. I will go on to the Camino in just a moment. Not literally. Um, but um, I, I hired the car. I, I used, inadvertently used, because I think I went down to um, Tamar or Coimbra, but ended up on a toll road anyway. And you can tell because the transponder lets out a little beep. And in our family, whenever we go under a, a, in through a toll or underneath a toll gantry, which reads it, you get this little beep. So we say cabin to cross check is the little custom in our family. And we get the little beep and it makes us sound like pilots. Uh, probably too much information, Carl. Um, but uh, yes, the day after, and I think it was less than 48 hours, I have to say, I went into the post office, showed the lady my hire car keys. She read the registration number, gave me basically a little piece of paper which told me how much I had to pay, and it was done and dusted there and then, and you've got the receipt for the payment. So I recommend going to the post office, just as the theportugalist.com uh, is saying, and obviously getting your own transponder is a good idea, as some people do, and I think that's specifically what you want to do, Jeff. So we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, driving your own car on the electronic toll roads uh, with a Portuguese registration plate, three ways of paying for the tolls if you have a car with Portuguese plates. You can either pay afterwards at the post office, as, as we've said, you can pay online, and you can even pay at the incredible multi-banco system. 
Now that itself is um, a way you'd have to do a, a separate program but on the wonders of the multi banco. Uh, and you'll know this if you've ever, as a tourist or a newbie to Portugal, stood behind somebody at a cash machine who has a, a handful of paper in the, like their filing system next to them, and they're there for half an hour. Uh, whilst everyone is standing very politely behind them, including you, thinking, what on earth is going on? They are paying all their bills and doing all their household admin, which you can do at a multi banker machine. It's quite extraordinary. Uh, paying online, they say, we're going back to tolls now. It's definitely the easiest way of doing this. Simply head to the Portagene payment page on ctt.pt and enter your license plate number, phone number, and NIF. You'll, the, you, the NIF presumably is optional at that point because you might not have one of those. Uh, you'll then need to log in your internet banking um, as I'm reading all this, I'm thinking, I am not clarifying this at all, am I? I'm, it sounds really complicated. Um, on that note, let me say it is stressful, and it can be stressful, and it is complex, but it's not as bad as it would seem. Use the use the post office. I would say use the transponder, get one or rent it, and let the, the rental car uh, company take care of it for you and they'll just debit it f via their system from your credit card or go into the post office use a post office and there are lots of post offices uh, in portugal um that you know we're well served for post offices that's that's the combo i would use unless you're investing in your own transponder which we'll find out about in due course the multi-banker system allows the same steps rather than using your online banking to pay you head to an atm and pay there using the reference provided so that's good as well and as i've said uh, the easiest way to pay at a post office, all you have to do is give over your vehicle's license plate details. That's the most straightforward way of doing it. Driving your own car now with a foreign registration plate. You may be driving your own foreign registered car if you're driving to Portugal or living here as an expat. If you have a non-Portuguese car, things are slightly more complicated. Wait till you matriculate it. <laughs> Don't bother. If you drive a non-Portuguese car on the toll roads, you can't actually pay for your journey either online or at the post office. Ah, some people just drive on the toll roads anyway, and many have been doing this for years without ever receiving a bill. I don't think I could cope with, with the um, background anxiety of that. But anyway, some do. If you're more cautious, however, there are a couple of things you can do. You can either buy um, pay-as-you-go credit to use your car on the toll roads. Interesting. Or you can register your car at an easy toll station. They call it easy toll, but it isn't. And on this article, portugalist.com, Portugal hyphen toll hyphen roads. They'll tell you how, uh, well, they'll give you a list of easy toll stations. Driving a rental car. You see, that that's the great thing. Most rental car companies charge one to two euros a day, they say here. And you'll also uh, need to pay the cost of the tolls as well. But that's a, a, a neat way of having it taken care of. Uh, I think rather than get more complex, I'm going to leave it there. You've got the article. I will put the link to that uh, in the show notes, uh, which you can get at uh, coffee.com forward slash Carl Munson. Um, still got that blooming thing on the screen there, which I can't get rid of. But I'm going to go to buying your own transponder now, which is specifically what uh, Jeff and Sally wanted to learn about as I scroll back up the article and try and find the link for that. Okay, we've got our pop-up gone now. So purchasing or renting the transponder. Uh, that's the next bit uh, I want to share with you. And uh, here it is with any luck. Um, oh, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Oh, so we're going to viaverde.pt. That's a good link to have as well. And um, I think I need to link directly to that, which I will do now for you. Uh, so you can sort of get a visual memory of it to, to know that you're in the right place. Uh, where are we? Adderir. Uh, There we go. That crashed. That crashed the show again. Um, and yes, we've got lots of comments to come back to as well. Fantastic. Uh, fantastic. We've got some comments to help with this as well. Um, sorry, that crashed the, the, the show one more time. I'm going to see if I can do it, if I can pull on the Via Verde information onto the screen. Usually works a second time. There we go. That's what you're looking for. Translates uh, into English. <laughs> there. I always, I, I always have Google Translate up and... Um, just very quickly and briefly then, um, Via Verde is more than just a toll system. It's like a sort of road loyalty system as well. And I think part of it is that they run some of the better service stations. 
it's it, it's a big thing here in Portugal. Okay, so green way, uh, the green route, via verde. Here, simplicity goes with you. They say, uh, trying to sell it to us. You can purchase the unit for twenty nine euros. Uh, a light user can rent the unit for seventy euros a month. And at the moment, a new scheme, frequent users uh, can get it for nothing. Uh, and they will get free shipping on that. So you can get it sent to a Portuguese address, I believe. Um, free shipping. Shipping is free for deliveries or collections in Portugal. I suspect then if a foreign address goes in there, um, you will have to pay for the shipping. But so lifetime warranty. It's, I mean, it's an amazing bit of kit. The batteries must last well I mean, because it, there must be a, sometimes. Or is a transponder not battery powered? Is it? I don't know how they work, but... Um, you get free shipping and it's not going to cost you a cent if you're a frequent user or you can rent or you can use it for 70 a month or you can purchase it outright for 30 euros. I hope that helps, Jeff. I hope that's a start. And you can see it's a little bit complex, but uh, probably I'm making it more complex than it actually is. And once you get cracking, you're fine. Personally, I've hired us here. I've asked to, to, to do to extend and include in the hire the use of a transponder and the rental company have taken care of it for me. More recently, um, I have just taken my registration into the post office and that worked beautifully. That was really, really good. Uh, just walking into the post office with the registration number and it felt like peace of mind. Uh, and I would want you and anyone else to avoid the stress that we had when we first arrived with our whopping 80 euros fine. Uh, for driving through the Via Verde. So slow down, take your time and go through the right lane, first of all. Take a mixture of payment methods uh, if you're taking a ticket and have cash as well. Remember that because you don't want that stress of your payment uh, system, your your British or whatever, your foreign card not working. You don't want that. So a lot of variables and um, I hope that helps uh, for the time being. And let's see what people are saying in the comments before we do a little bit about the Camino, um, because, of course, uh, we'll be moving from using our cars in Portugal to going on foot on the ancient and spiritual pilgrim route of Portugal. Crikey, lots of lovely comments here. Um, I think you've been having your own conversation while I've been whittling on about um, tolls and transponders. Uh, Jeannie's asking, Gary, what kind of fish? Um, we'll find out the answer to that in just a moment. If wine was supposed to be recorked, the cork would not expand upon opening. Therefore, the bottle is meant to be drank in its entirety. Um, I think it was Confucius who said that, wasn't it, Jim? <laughs> Very good. Um, looking forward to joining you guys tonight on the Expat Sport Report, says Frank. And I, I bet he's quietly praying that Calvin returns and it's not me you have to rely on for sport information because I don't have any. Uh, Mrs. L, Sally in the Cotswolds here, Carl. Or Sal, hello, Sal. Uh, I do listen often, and I like being called Mrs. L. Oh, that's good. I'm easygoing. Vegan uh, plus happy eggs. Oh, that's cool. Um, vegan and happy eggs, because it's you know there are various descriptions, aren't there? Sort of ovo vegan, ovo uh, non lactarian or whatever. Cod botherer. I've got, I'm particularly fond of people pescatarians, and I call them cod botherers. Um, but yeah, vegan plus happy eggs I like that. We're, we're we're having our own happy eggs. I hope soon. The, the chickens who we've had since they were little. Um, are now singing, and apparently that's a sign that they're getting ready to lay. Um, I'm like that myself. Um, I, I'm easygoing, vegan, plus happy eggs. You make me laugh a lot, Carl. Looking forward to meeting you, maybe September. I'm looking forward to that as well, Mrs. L, Sal. Um, and, yeah, we, we, will, um, we won't be recorking any wine then, I don't suppose. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and lovely to make your acquaintance. Good morning from me with a different view than I expected. Thanks. Yes, Paul, are you, are you still in the hospital? Or, or are you laid up back at home? Uh, thanks for your thoughts yesterday and also other members of our group. It will not change my plans, but may delay them. But staying positive, looking forward to being... Oh, so you're in hospital. Uh, we're, this is hospital radio as well this morning. Paul, so surprised and sorry to hear of your predicament, but really glad to hear that the um, NHS came up trumping for you. And yeah, the, you know, another reminder of how wonderful the NHS is in the, in the UK and so glad to hear that you're on the mend. Paul, lots of love to you from all of us. Uh, Jeff, um, had some great replies to my toll question. As we're in UK, looks like Imovis offer a great service where I can buy a unit in UK. Awesome. Can pay on my UK debit card and cover Spain as well. Result, many thanks. There you go. That's all he needed. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm going on and on about information. All you need to do, sounds like, is go to Imovis. Imovis? Emovis. Um, and it's all simple. So result there for Jeff. 
No problem. Glad to have been of service, even though it's nothing to do with me. We wanted to be close to Lisbon. Oh, this is why Jonathan's in Bomberal and close to the Silver Coast. Now, here speaks a wise man. Uh, that's a good shout then, Bomberal, close to the Silver Coast. Awesome. San Martino de Porto, of course, Nazare. It's a lovely region, and we can't wait to go to Obidos. Yes, the, the medieval, is it, walled town of Obidos. A health and safety nightmare, I have to say. If you go with kids there, hold their hand all the time. Sheer drops. They don't do it quite like they do in the UK. You know, it's much more um, exciting here. Also, it's great as the roads are free because, uh, <laughs> yes, referring to the toll there, Jonathan has figured out going from Pom Bomberal to uh, and that area, I guess, no tolls. And you've found out a way to get to Lis Lisboa, but uh, presumably without paying as well, but would have to pay to go up or down the country. Okay, not then. Um, but yes, going east and west, uh, no tolls to pay up and down. That tends to be how it works, isn't it? Is that, yeah, when you want to make the big journeys, uh, you start encountering the toll system. Thank you, Jonathan, for your intel there on why you chose Bomberal. Good choice, sir. Um, only little ones, but all healthy and in great condition, which is good to see. Uh, so Gary's doing his sort of kind of ecology work there, um, making sure all the fish are healthy and in great condition. Um, I, which I, I'd love to join you one morning, Gary. Maybe we could do an outside broadcast. I did the same as you got fined the same the first time I came here. Yeah, we learned the hard way, I think. Um, Ty Johnson, um, shout out to Sal, I think, from Ty. More vegans, good, good. And uh, yeah, we're always happy to have the vegan conversation. And any, you know, any great eateries that come up in Portugal for vegans, let me know. We're very happy to share that. Uh, a question for Gary or the other fishermen here Can you fish trout or eel? In the, going from veganism to fishing again. Uh, all of life is here on the Good Morning Portugal live stream. Can you fish for trout or eel? Uh, I can imagine Gary in a kind of J.R. Hartley get up with his waders on, fly fishing uh, for trout. Um, is that true though, Gary? When we first came to Portugal in February, we registered our, registered our credit card at the entry toll on the road from Seville. To Faro, we were charged automatically. When we left the Algarve and traveled up the West Coast, we went through two or three overhead camera tolls and just assumed our card would be charged. Any tolls we paid in cash. So it's only the electronic ones. Would the car card still be active after five and a half months? I don't know. I really don't know. And this is problem. the problem with all of this is the complexity of it. There are so many variables that it will inevitably become complex. And to some extent, you do have to hope for the best, I think. Um, because good luck trying to ring up a company at the moment or administration in Portugal and asking them that question. Not only the language barrier, but just, you know, getting to the bottom of that with all the variables. Uh, I used Imovis, said Ty, before I came to live here and brought a Portuguese car. I had no issues. You can't use these for Portuguese registered cars. OK, so Imovis is is the um, uh, immigrant tourist uh, explorer uh, system. OK, thank you. This we're coming. We, we, we're really, this is really, truly the hive mind this morning, isn't it? Bringing all these bits of information together. All right. Uh, that does it. Uh, for car rentals okay um, we went to the portuguese post office and bought a tag very easy money deducted from the bank as and when it is used so tag by tag tie i think you mean the transponder unit um good it sounds even better and it sounds like the post office is the right place to go i've got a story i don't know if i'm gonna have time but i want to tell you about the two postmen i saw in a cafe yesterday when i was taking back my hire car actually uh if i have time I, I tell you what, let's leave because we've got so much good information on um, the tolls and the roads here. Let's do the Camino next week. And um, it won't be Monday because we've got Diogo coming, Diogo Bandera uh, coming. And it's Ask Diogo. He would know about this. He wouldn't probably know about it from the point of view of a tourist, but he would certainly know how to use the toll system as a Portuguese person and hacks, I suspect. So I'm going to leave the Camino today. Sorry if that disappoints you, but we'll come back to it next week uh, here on the Good Morning Portugal live stream because I want to finish with a little vignette. Uh, now I've been talk talking about post offices and, and now postmen about a lovely little scene I saw, which was another reminder about why Portugal is so blooming cool and awesome. Uh, Jeannie, yes, you can at certain times of the year fish for trout and eels, and you have to have the correct license. I, I look forward to doing another special, not <laughs> like this one, about how to get a license for fishing. That should only take a couple of hours. Uh, love the trains, chucking that in there. So we, we're talking about um, by car, by wheel, and by foot nearly, uh, but also by rail now. The trains are awesome, Frank, absolutely right. Um, they will be for you, especially as someone who lives in the capital. 
Uh, and you can go out anywhere across the country from Lisbon, of course. Um, but I love the local trains on the uh, Linha de Norte, the northern line, uh, my nearest station now. Mogaforesh, a delightful little station, delightful little village. And the trains are brilliant. The train will take me to Coimbra to the south, Aveiro and Porto to the north. Really good, really good value too. Last year, says Jim, we rented a car at Lisboa Airport and rented the transponder. We were on one of the toll roads coming from Setubal, uh, Setubal and went through several Via Verde lanes. Several of them beeped and several did not. Ah, When we turned the car back in, I told the rental company what happened and they said not to worry. They always say that. It's just what's so wonderful. It's part of Portuguese life. <laughs> Don't worry about that. I rented the transponder and it was their responsibility if the transponder did not work properly. I never got any additional bills. So, yes, renting the transponder is well worth it. Thanks, Jim, for that. And that's what I love about the Good Morning Portugal uh, community, the, the project here, how we do this, is it's everyone chipping in with their personal experience. Learning the official way is one thing, but actually finding out what happens for people is another. And that's what we do here. Via Verde have a phone app now. Of course they do, Gary. Like everything in Portugal has an app, doesn't it? A very technologically advanced country with the multibanco system, excellent Wi-Fi and broadband, a, a fiber. I've just got fiber myself um, in, you know, not the most cosmopolitan of areas. Incredibly technologically advanced is Portugal. I think they put sort of great uh, store in that as, as, a, as a country. Uh, thanks for that, Gary. If you rent a car and include the transponder in rental, remove the stress. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. Calma, tranquilo. Uh, Jeannie, oh, that's good news. I never, I've never seen trout or eel on the menu in Portugal. I was wondering why. So she's not seeing it in the restaurant. She's going to fish it for herself, uh, I imagine. Um, such is the way of the Belgian people, utterly resourceful um, and um, fishing eels and trout out of the river and probably cooking it there and then uh, by the side of the water. Uh, Julie Marsh. Oh, hello, Julie. How are you? Good morning to you in sunny Fundal. But it's been hot over there last few days, and it was had some welcome cloud cover, I hope. Happy eggs are older chickens. <laughs> the vegan agenda. Uh, happy. Did Ty mention he was vegan? Uh, happy eggs are older chickens who get to live out their lives in full. True. That would be the happiest egg for sure. No, no argument with you there, Ty. Um, try towing trailers as a future subject. I can't make sense of it. What's that? The legislation or what, tell, tell us more, Ty. Maybe you should come on a screen uh, one morning and tell us about towing a trailer in Portugal. As if life wasn't stressful enough in a foreign country. Can you imagine towing a, a big caravan or a trailer or whatever? And Wendy just in. Bon dia from uh, Wendy. Good morning to you, Wendy. So let me just share my little... I mean, it's quarter to ten already. What's going on here? Um, we're going to have to carry forward the Camino feature. I have written about it, I'm sure, uh, in one of my blogs. And, you know, if you're really desperate, now I've whetted your appetite. Lots of information on the web about the Portuguese Camino. Uh, pilgrimage route. We'll come back to that. But I just wanted to say to you, uh, there I was. Um, what's this, Gary? I just heard a guy called boat number 66 back to shore, but I think 99 is in a bit of trouble. Where would we be without Gary and his dad jokes? <laughs> it's a joke, everyone, just before you get concerned about Gary um, having trouble out on the water. They're very good. Okay. Took my hire car back um to to return it yesterday use a lovely company uh in, in um between uh coimbra and Aveiro here uh, recommend them to you ibero car uh in the middle of nowhere as far as i can see actually what it's near is the alianza underground museum so you could combine if you come to san galios they'll pick you up from the from the station it's on the same line that i was talking about the linea de norte uh the, and the ibero car uh, it's San Galios is the town that they're in in Portugal. Now, I take my hire car back yesterday. It's got a transponder in it, all the things we've talked about. I didn't rent it on this occasion because I now know uh, I'm almost a Portuguese. -er. Um, I now know how to avoid the tolls, or so I think. So, but they, I might get stung with a bill later. That happens. Um, but I took it back, and I, I saw that the place was shut. First great thing about Portugal, they shut for lunch. Okay, can you imagine that? I don't. I can't imagine that um, a hire car company where I'm from, with all their sort of corporate wherewithal and everything, they're eating al desco, aren't they? They're not going out for lunch. Al desco, isn't that a terrible thing? Having lunch at your desk with some pre-packed sandwich, and this is what I'm talking about here in Portugal. They shut their doors. I think from one till two. Come back later. Go and have some lunch yourself. So I went off, and um, because I was cycling home, I know I thought I'd have a cold beer, and a lovely cold beer. A little bit more intel. I asked for an Imperial. The guy looked at me with a quizzical look on his face, 
It's a Fino in the north of Portugal, not an Imperial. So I got myself a nice cold beer, sat in the cafe, and um, very easy going, nice on the corner, watching life go by, waiting for the higher company doors to reopen. Can't begrudge them stopping for lunch. Beautiful part of Portuguese culture. Then a postman turns up. They use mopeds and motorbikes here, the postman in Portugal. And uh, one of them turns up, and I see that a table has been laid for two people. And um, a little bit later, his pal turns up. So the, these Portuguese postmen have done their round, and now they're having a lunch. And it's laid out. And it's not. It's not some sort of greasy spoon where they're grabbing a you know a plate of um, a, a fry up. These guys are starting with olives, and they're sharing a bottle of red, and they have the diaria. And I'm thinking, this is so civilized. I remember being a postman back in Devon. And I was on some of the most picturesque routes in Devon. It was absolutely beautiful. And I really enjoyed being a postman. Um, but I can't remember. I, I used to go home, actually, and have a fry up mid-round. Mid I can say that now without being fired because I've already left. But I used to do that. But I don't remember ever doing anything as refined and excellent as finishing my round and going in and having a, a, a Portuguese lunch. And the diaria is about six euros, I think. I think it was 650 in this restaurant. And I just thought, this is what is so lovely about Portuguese life. You know, this is the, the worst excesses of corporate life that will have people eating at their desks or missing out on lunch at all with some paltry 30 minute lunch break where you, you know, you have to go and do things in your lunch break and you say you don't get time to eat. That's not happening here in Portugal. And I hope long may it continue that your working man enjoys a sit-down lunch with a glass of wine and a few olives and then he eats the Prata do Dia um, made by the um, mom and pop cafe that he sat in a leisurely lunch with his pal taking it easy talking to all the other people in the cafe I thought it's another one of those moments where I thought yes that's why I love living here it's civilized that is civilized and long as I say may it continue you know the the, the corporate drive all around the world for productivity, for profit, is is taking all that stuff away. But I see that the Portuguese people are holding on to it. And even, I, I think here, some people get a lunch allowance. You know, the minimum wage here is 650 euros a month, I believe. And uh, some of that is made up by a lunch allowance, which obviously keeps the cafe culture going as well. Because if you get paid for your lunch, or if you get paid towards your lunch with a lunch allowance, you can be subsidized in the cafe effectively, can't you? And I just think that's a really good way to go about life. A proper sit-down lunch, glass of wine at lunchtime, maybe a siesta afterwards. You know, refined, civilized, excellent. Uh, and just a few more comments then as we, um, as we uh, conclude here. I said last night I'm in a mood to conclude. I certainly am now. Uh, last comment from Sean. I love how he says this. Bon dia, my dear. Uh, thanks for your help yesterday. My pleasure, Sean. I seem to be doing a lot of work off the screen now, uh, networking, connecting people up behind the scenes. So try me. If you want any help from me, Carl Munson, I'm very happy to help you with your adventure here in Portugal, just connecting people up, uh, people with property to sell, people with property to rent, people looking for places to buy or needing a place in an emergency as it turned out yesterday, managed to help somebody yesterday. Uh, so I was delighted to do that. And uh, at your service here, uh, a good morning, Portugal. Uh, good morning to you. Bon dia to you, Sean. Uh, I left work for my... I <laughs> Neil says, I left work for my lunch three years ago. I still haven't gone back. Lol, that's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. The long lunch break, uh, a, a, a long forgotten tradition in many countries now. Thanks for that, Neil. Precisely why we moved here, says Frank, the relaxed lifestyle in Portugal is precious. And it's up to us um, elders, isn't it? And ex elder expats to make sure that it continues, you know, to, 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 to shout it out from the rooftops. Come here and enjoy that. And, and our Portuguese hosts, please never let that slip. Uh, it is precious, as you say, Frank. Uh, we're a right couple uh, of helpful curls. Yes. What is it about curls? I think in um, Scandinavian, it actually literally translates as helpful. Uh, morning to you, Carl, by the way. Uh, I'm not talking to myself. I'm talking to my friend Carl McAdam over there in Fundau. Yep. Uh, planning to visit to buy land, uh, says Clemmy Shaz. Um, yeah, if we can help, let us know, uh, Clemmy, and have a great day. All of you, have a great day. I can't believe it. It's 10 to 10. Uh, I've been rambling on for that long, and I, I, I applaud you for sticking with me uh, this long. Have a great day. 
bom dia to you, to Ja, to Prosima. I'm not at Tiamania with no no shows over the weekend. We're back on Monday with Ask Diogo. Um, the insight of a real Portuguese bloke. See you then. Take care. Bye for now. Bom fim de semana.